Assalamu alaikum, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, yes hello everyone. So what is left in chemical process safety? So we have chap two chapters and actually there are two small chapters I was thinking to take them in one go but I just decided to take chapter 11 by itself and then chapter 12 by itself. So chapter 11 talks about hazards uh, identification and chapter 12 about risk assessment and in chapter 11 it's important to know because you're going to go through a lot of what I'm going to mention today when you go to some, some kind of safety courses uh, where they mention hazard studies okay if you heard about hazard studies this is in this chapter so what do we have here okay so the, the main thing about hazards is we know what's hazards right something dangerous whatever it could be dangerous to human uh, it could be an equipment it could be something that is a release so uh, what happens is there's a, a hazard identification right based on this hazard uh, in my hazard study I put a scenario a scenario of that how this hazard will happen or scenario because of that hazard what will happen okay so there's a scenario and this scenario I consider what probability of this uh, of this hazard if it happens and what consequence maybe it has a high probability that this hazard substance will get released there's a high probability that there will be a release of h2s of a certain uh, limit uh, uh, limit uh, values uh, however uh, and then you say that uh, it ha a high probability that ex this accident what consequence it will have right and how frequent this will happen okay and so it could be very dangerous but uh, well, I'll, I'll say the other way around so so it, it could be that the consequence that it is very dangerous but it happens only once per 10 years okay so 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 uh, considering that's very dangerous that is an issue but it makes it of a lower risk if it has, happens once every 10 years but if it happens every month but it is of a, of a very low risk again that brings it down but if it has a high uh, consequence and dangerous and it may happen every month that is a very high risk and consider a high risk determination if it is yes and yeah, we need to put a system for that and if it's no of course we need a, a response for that uh, to work on an emergency response on mitigation mitigation that means uh, to take an action against of this risk that we have uh, so we need to, to consider it but of course not a total operation system to be inherited within our process okay so what do we have a hazard identification described in chapter number 11 or chapter 10 in the second edition the old edition so we have these four things right for process hazard hazards checklist it's a simple thing it's just a checklist hazard surveys uh, is uh, doing a survey and on what if it is hazardous ha it has a high hazard or a low hazard and the DOE index is one of the DOE indexes that you're going to use in this chapter number three is the hazard study which is the hazards and operability study and we are going to see that later and then number four is the safety review okay safety review is just an effective but less formal type of hazard study it's like informal people sitting together and discussing with each other okay now we have a hazard substance what should we do what are the possible consequences so people talking with each other okay so it's a, something that is simpler uh, in this case so we'll start with number one project has us checklists and a check checklist is something like for example when you go to a car uh, and you go to do some kind of a service for your car your automobile and then he checks within his list he has a list and and well instead of mentioning the list like that so this is my list okay and in this list what does he do he says yes check oil engine yes it is checked air pressure is good fluid and radiator oh my god this is low uh, air filter is bad 
and and they always put x here even if you have good air filters that <laughs> they change it okay well, my sorry but that's my experience my air filter always goes bad i don't know why so fluid yes you need to change your fluid level or put a fluid level and and of course everything has a price right and yeah, here is like 1 bd here's like 25 bd you see i know the numbers fluid level is just like nothing and and headlights uh, yes the the front light front lights are good the back lights are not good okay uh, exhaust system for leaks uh, there are always leaks when you need to fix a leak it takes 5 bd uh, or 50 bd uh, check fluid levels and brake system you have a problem here you need to change it gasoline level in tank you have a problem uh, to be honest and show that you're a good person right and you need to put some of them yes and some of them no sorry i don't mean to teach you something like that it's not good so what i'm trying to say is this, this is just a checklist okay now imagine like making a checklist just for a car we are going to have a checklist for what for our industry oh my god you see that and and, and of course i'm not going to go through all that but just to get an idea, so this is just a general layout. For example, a checklist for my layout. Uh, areas are properly drained, firewalls, uh, is there any obstruction to any underground hazardous, uh, hazardous over obstruction, enough headroom, uh, access for emergency vehicle. Well, let's go see something else. The buildings, are there ladders, stairways, and escape? ways are there fire doors uh, are there uh, is there any obstruction marked if there's something that will hit your head is there are there ventilations safety glasses go to the process well consequence of exposure to operations a special fume may uh, happen or dust hoods required uh, uh, Process laboratory checked for runaway explosive conditions. So you are checking the process here. Okay, more. We sh we want more. The piping, safety showers and I require sprinkler system. So you can see how we have something that is good for our lab here. Let's see something else. <laughs> we have much more. I ju I'm just showing you the examples. Just a checklist, right? And it could be different from one place to another. Like venting, relief valves or rupture disc required check and uh, mat ma materials of construction corrosion resistance checked vents properly designed uh, yes good the flame uh, the flame there are uh, arresters there is something that catches the flame on the vent line yes uh, really valves protected from plugging by rupture disc no we have a problem here like uh, for example uh, and so on what about the uh, instrument and electrical all control fail safe yes all of them are safe all equipment properly labeled no some of them are not labeled <laughs> you see for example process safety affected by response lag yes it is affected labels for all startup switches no they don't have labels uh, so it's something like that and you have them for the safety equipment like for fire extinguishers and detection apparatus for raw materials if they if they you have handling equipment uh, for that and it's and and uh, it could handle the extreme weather current conditions you have storage and so that was checklist okay that was the first part the simple straightforward and you just need to know that there's something called checklist which is important for us in our hazards identification Number two is the hazard survey. So survey is a survey, it's to be on, okay? So that is a survey. Uh, so it's, it's like you're filling in, you're asking, and you're seeing what will happen, and you go on and around and, and see what's going to happen. So here it has, has a survey, as simple as an inventory of hazard materials and a facility. It could be simple, okay? But talking about like more systematic, it could be more complicated and and one of those is the door fire and explosion index okay so we will go through that index and see how it looks like hazard survey of course includes rating what does we what do we mean by rating that means you put numbers one two three four five so for example one that it's a safe five it is dangerous so something like that so you put numbers 
so and and those numbers would be like well known and for everyone so here you rate the hazards of storing handling flammable explosive materials uh, so you rate them so that you know that in what range it is it is in a good range or a bad range and so on so this systematic approach goes uh, through uh, various steps those various steps as we can see number one a systematic approach in terms of judgmental factors okay so we don't want like any like it is you have judgmental factors of course you will always have uh, but we are trying to make it very systematic to get out of this being different from one person to another. We not need something to be consistent and systematic. Number one, break the process down into units. So put sections like the reactor by itself, the storage tank by itself, the pump. I'm going to do a hazard study on the reactor. I'm going to do a hazard study on another reactor. I'm going to do a hazard study on a storage tank and so on. Use experience to let's select the units or section that have the highest likelihood of a significant hazard so if you want to do a hazard study and you also may use a checklist approach in this as well uh, go to the places where you think that you have a problem i mean don't go to the places where you feel that everything is good and okay it, it reminds me that for example i come to the class and uh, a professor coming to the class or a teacher going to the class and he's saying that those who are absent I'm going to, I'm going to uh, fire them. I'm going to uh, s make them suffer. I'm going to do, and actually n none of them, because they're always absent, they're not sitting in front of them. So if you want to say a word, say it in the right place, right? So here I'm saying that, of course, you will use the previous experience that you already written and, and where you, you know there are failures or possible hazards that could come out uh, and, and there you run your hazard study. Number three, determine the material factors, which means what chemicals are being used. If you know what chemicals are being used, maybe those chemicals are flammable. Maybe those chemicals are explosive. So this will help you in what? In your hazard study. And then you're going to adjust this with penalties. What do I mean by penalty? It's flammable, you put a penalty, that means uh, you're going to count that number that you're indicating or you're rating uh, that this this could cause some hazards uh, so I need to consider this and actually you will put another penalty if they don't have safety procedures right <laughs> so you put another penalty if they don't have safety procedures now if it is flammable and it is very it has as an exothermic reaction and it's very volatile you're having a penalty or a penalty or a penalty and if you don't have safety procedures of that you have another penalty it's like you're saying like you imagine adding all those penalties you're going to have a high number saying that my hazard steady state that we have we have a problem in this place finally we are going to have the rates and we are going to compare with the table of course and with the experience uh, what do we have here uh, here is the DO fire and explosion index, the one I just mentioned. And let's have a look. Let's have a look. How do they look like? For example, let's go at the top. Fire and explosion index. The country, Bahrain division, I don't know where, location in Sukhair, uh, process unit, the water desalination unit in uh, Sukhair, uh, the building. Uh, this is me. And then you're going to start, for example, uh, with the material factor okay uh, so what we have here you're going to see uh, the first thing is the process hazards exothermic chemical reactions so the the penalty is from 0.3 to 1.25 so what penalty you're going to add here for example it's a very high exothermic reaction you're going to put 1.25 okay uh, and then endothermic processes less of course you can see 0.2 to 0.4 um, material handling and transfer you're going to have less uh, if you don't have good material handling you're going to put one and you, you see that you can add penalties here uh, depending on what you have so this is the range and these are the factors used here a special uh, process hazard so if it is toxic you're going to add some penalty then and of course depending on which pressure range what flammable region what is the pressure operating pressure and if you have relief setting for that uh, 
and of course if you have low, uh, for example co uh, corrosion or erosion some leakages do you have fire equipment or not and so on and then you're going to add some special factors uh, in which you feel that you must add if it is very dangerous uh, uh, and, and then you're going to multiply whatever you found for F1 into F2 to get an F3 and then if you have an explosive material, the material factor you're using, you're also going to put that here. For no penalty, you're going to add zero. Uh, so what you're trying to say here, this is what you're going to do. You're, you're, you're having an index and this is the survey. We said we are talking about hazard surveys. But in this hazard surveys, one of them is like more complicated like rather than a simple survey, you do it by your own, in which it is an index putting penalties and saying that this place is hazard or not. So, uh, of course, you can use also the, the, what they call the loss control credit factors, okay? Uh, which means what? It means that... Uh, what about if you want to add a credit? You see, you want to add a credit. That means I have an emergency power, okay? I have a cooling system. I have a control in my explosion. I have a shutdown emergency system. I have a computer control of everything. I have inert gas for inerting, and so on. So what you're saying that you're adding credits, adding credits. And this added credit value, it will also identify, let me continue, my material association credit factor that I have all my control valves remote and everything uh, is, is, is under control. I don't dump things, I have a blow down. I have also a drainage system, an interlock system also. Uh, for fire protection, I have leak detection, I have fire water supply, so I have everything. I have extinguishers and I have a protection for all my cables. I have foam to put off my fires. I have also curtains, I mean water, uh, like water curtains to put a fire and then I have value for C1, C2, 3 and I multiply them and this will give me the loss control credit factor. And I also can have a summary analysis, uh, sorry the risk analysis summary in which I put my fire uh, index and, and, uh, and of course I can put the details, there are a lot of details here, radius of exposure, area of exposure just to reflect and decide based on the index, based on the areas that are exposed, the damage factor and that control credit factor that I have and, and putting all those information, I can also put a value and see how much uh, does that uh, contribute in total. So uh, now just to get an idea, if you have uh, a fire and explosion index, the door fire and explosion index of 1 to 60, you can say that the degree of hazard is light. If you have it from 61 to 96, it's moderate. And then it's intermediate, heavy, and it could be severe if it is greater than 159. And uh, this uh, index is used to determine the consequences of an accident. This includes the maximum probable property damage and the maximum probable uh, days outage. So what damage and how many days you're going to uh, lose of, of that. So that is the hazard of study. Okay, that is the hazard of study. Uh, can we get a little also an idea of this hazard of study? We have seen the DOE index, but it's good to see like uh, how, how do we think when we go through that. Uh, because I told you one way of, of uh, an index, but there are other surveys that you can use. So what is the basic of all that? The basic of all of that are these steps here. So you begin with a detailed flow sheet in front of you, having all the process units, and I'm going to, you're going to select a study node. I'm going to study that place. I'm going to study these process variables. I'm going to study these process lines. I'm going to study that pump or that compressor or that heat exchanger. And then I'm going to study the flow or the level uh, of of the uh, of the uh, in the process vessel, I'm going to study the temperature in that heat exchanger. I'm going to study the pressure in that vessel, okay? And and then you're going to use some words that would help you in your hazard study, okay? Uh, so, uh, uh, why you're using these words uh, to the process parameters, which are these, to suggest possible deviation, which means I will have low temperature, my temperature will go down, or I will have high pressure, 
okay and and uh, the, the viscosity is going to be very high the flow rate is going to be very low the level is going to be very high it will overflow okay uh, well i when i said overflow is the consequence but the deviation that it went high okay higher than a certain set point or a limit that i'm identifying here so i have guide words like low high uh, to these parameters to suggest possible deviation so i have a deviation when you have a deviation there are consequences okay blow blowing off or overflow or whatever could happen there right there is a consequence and 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 then you're going to recommend action and you're going to recommend action like we need to change the design not the usual case we need to change the equipment not the usual case we need to change the operating procedures that is usual we need to improve our maintenance that is uh, 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 usual as well we need to investigate more and see what we need to do but remember when you recommend action you need to identify what you're going to do exactly and who is going to do it and when he's going to do it when you put this this is like an action plan action plan to have things done correctly if you don't know what to do how do you expect that it will be done if you don't know what to do if no one is going to, as no one is assigned to do it then even if you say we will do this but who will do it <laughs> you did not say a name you do not pronounce it okay so if you say what you want to do and you say who will do it but you didn't give him a time limit that means he may take a year to do it and actually you want to finish it in a month for example okay so you need to recommend actions really correctly and then of course you recall all the information all what you have done all the data used all of working papers and all your hazard worksheets can we see other hazard worksheets like other than the door index there yes yes of course but before we go and see the and the the, the, door, uh, the other hazard surveys let's see the the words the guide words that i was talking about low and high to the process parameters and these are simple ones and then i'm going to show you a big list but just to see the simple words for example the no more less okay no that means it's not present more that means it's increasing a higher pressure right it's more pressure higher pressure less that means it's a lower pressure and then you're going to say <clears throat> you're going to identify based on that what are the consequences if i have a higher pressure uh, for example a greater activity that intended flow rate pressure rise uh, it, there's going to be a consequence of that right there is no consequence really here mentioned very clearly so what do you have you have a guide words for the hazard procedure you see all of these yeah, there are many words actually uh, you can go to more and more words but uh, these are the very uh, nice words it is it's easy to write them rather than writing things that are uh, very long the pressure is very high and uh, so you just write what you already know that you're studying the pressure you written that that you're going to write high okay or more i mean more or higher just giving you an indication that and there is a quantitative increase in that temperature or pressure or whatever okay so it does not happen none more higher greater it increases less lower it decreases as well as happening within some kind of of, of uh, same time uh, part of reverse the opposite thing everyone give every one of these words gives you a little different meaning so let's see here for example there is a guide telling you that what usually is used okay from their experience so the valid guide words and process parameters combination for process lines are as follows so flow we can say the flow stopped the pump is not working the flow increased for some reason I don't know why it went down as well as happening with something else part of it happening it's reversed I don't know how <laughs> okay the temperature stopped you cannot say the temperature stopped you cannot say the pressure stopped okay it's either go up or down okay so that you can see that things that make sense concentration uh, there's no input of concentration that there's there's nothing getting in you cannot say there's no pH right and so and these are the things that are usually that you can find and you also can find sorry the val the valid guide word as well uh, for 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 uh, for process 
combinations uh, such as uh, you have here level temperature pressure and uh, and so these are two beautiful uh, two beautiful uh, uh, tables uh, sorry for that so these are two beautiful tables that we have uh, this is for the process lines and this is for the process vessels okay uh, you're to, it's good to have guidelines for for us and 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 here's something that you can also add this is a worksheet and you can develop many different worksheets just mentioning the guide words that you have and what are the consequences if you have more pressure and 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 what are the safeguards that you're going to protect and what recommendations you're going to add you see this is a bigger one i know that will confuse your eye but you're talking about a certain unit or a certain node in, in your in your in your it's shown in the plug flow diagram you have its number here and then you're mentioning about a flow that it is increasing or or a f level which is higher and so on uh, let's take a, a, an example just to get the idea so what do we have here we have an a reactor and we are trying to form what we have is here is that we have an ammonia and phosphoric acid react to form diammonium phosphate DAP a non-hazardous product the DAP flows from the reactor to an open storage tank so this is the storage tank the relief valves are provided on the storage tank the reactor will discharge to outside on the enclosed area so you have relief valves if too much phosphoric acid let, let me enlarge this I feel that you feel that if too much phosphoric acid is fed to the reactor compared to the ammonia feed rate and off specification products are created. So of course, when you have more phosphoric acid, you don't have the specification of the product that you're trying to achieve, but the reaction is safe. If the ammonia and phosphoric acid flow rates both increase, the rate of energy will accelerate, oh my God, and the reactor as designed may be unable to handle the resulting increase in temperature and pressure. So if you have more ammonia, you may have a problem. If too much ammonia is fed to the reactor as compared to the normal phosphoric acid feed rate, unreacted ammonia may carry over the DAP storage tank. Okay, so this one, you have more and more and then it overflows. Any residual ammonia in the DAP tank will be re re released into the enclosed work area causing personal exposure. So if you have going out here, uh, 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 this will cause some exposure to some people working around this reactor and it could be a problem. Okay, great. So what do we have here? So just giving you an example, an example here, just look at it. Uh, so we have has of team number three, maybe you, drawing number, uh, this, is, this was the date, and that was 27-6-1981. Revision number three, and when we went there, what did we see? We put our item number, okay, just to refer back to it. We are, we are talking about the line of the phosphoric acid feed line to the deep re, deep, DAP reactor. Deliver acid feed to the reactor at a rate of that GPM and YPSIG. Okay, figure 6.6. .6. So what happens, the flow, either we have less flow or no flow uh, of phosphoric acid. So there's no feed material in the phosphoric acid tank. And, and this means the cause is also, uh, another cause of that, why this is happening, why you have no phosphoric acid, no feed material, uh, that means we don't have any input. My, my storage that I'm trying, to, uh, that I'm using to, to have phosphoric acid is empty. My flow indicator is not working, it feels high. Operator sets phosphoric acid too low by mistake. Consequences, unreacted ammonia. I have a lot of ammonia which is unreacted uh, in the reactor, carried to the, the, the DAP, uh, the, the storage tank, and released to the, the work area. You have a lot of ammonia released, oh my God. Uh, so what I need to do? I need to have safeguard periodic maintenance of valve B to make sure that this doesn't happen. And I need to have ammonia detector as well and an alarm. Actions. Consider adding an alarm shutdown of the system for low phosphoric acid. So we will consider this action so this will never happen. And ensure periodic maintenance of the valve B is adequate. So we have now safeguards, but uh, other than the safeguards that we have already in place, we may think of additional actions so that this does not happen. Okay, so we have safeguards, but we may have more actions. You see how beautiful is that? 
And I know that if you think of the dot index, you, see, you feel, oh my God, that was complicated. There are different ways of looking at things, but this is the standard way that I'm trying to explain here. And, and for example, uh, the, the vessel uh, DAP reactor contain the reaction and we want to contain the reaction at a certain degree centigrade and PSI uh, pressure. Loss of agitation, there's no agitation. Agitator motor fails or the, the, the mechanical linkage fails. So what do I have? I have unreacted, nothing is reacting or there's little reacted uh, reaction and there's unreacted ammonia in the reactor carried again to the tank and released to the work area. And again, the same thing here. And we are considering and shut down if the agitation stops, okay? And there's something more of course here. I'm just showing you a cut of that thing. Uh, this is an example that we have taken before. For example, we have an exothermic reaction of having monomers in to produce a monomer. And what do I have? I have a cooling water in, cooling down the system. Why? Because it's an exothermic reaction. I just want to cool down the system, okay? Cool down the system. I have a temperature controller here just to make sure that if the temperature goes very high, I pump on in more water. I open the valve to have more water entering to cool out the system. So that is my in my example here so i will have also a hazard analysis study a little different from what i i had seen just now but it still gives you uh, it still gives you an idea of what you are trying to achieve here so again the project name a certain date the reactor uh, is written the name of the reactor for example 10 2 of course this is just an example so I'm saying that I, I, I'm putting in just a reference item here. I'm going to study the cooling coil, the flow of the cooling coil. If it stopped, if the cooling, if the flow rate of the cooling stopped, there's no cooling water in. So what are the possible causes? The control valve fails closed. So you have the control valve is not working or there's plugging in the coil or the cooling water service is failing for some reason. Uh, the controller fails and closes the valve. It fails and closes the valve. I don't know how this happens because it should. If it fails, we should make it fail open rather than then fail close because it's a cooling. It's not heating. So if it fails, it should cool, not heat. Okay, so that that's a problem where it closes the valve. Air pressure fails. So you, you can see there are many things here. And then there's a deviation guide words, which means if there's no flow, this. These are the possible reasons for that. Maybe I have the deviation is a high flow. High flow, which means that the air pressure fails and now I have a high flow. Or the control valve is failing and, and it's opening. Because the front now, the control valve failed, it opens, which makes sense. That's why I have a high flow. Or it could be that I have a low flow. You see, I'm having different possible causes depending, depending on the deviation guide walls for the process parameter that of the study node that I'm studying in the reactor, the vessel, right? And then you're going to put the consequences. If the control valve uh, closed and there's no inside, there's no cooling. So I have no cooling, possible runaway reaction where you have high heat going up. So what are you going to do? You're going to select the valve to, to fail open and that's what I said like you need to say to have it fail open not closing uh, and you're going to put a field uh, maintenance procedure and and so on okay who is going to do it these people are going to do it when they are going to do it you're going to do it in this date okay and 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 you can see here this one is like more uh, sophisticated and has more details and if you want to go now more into that this is the big one i just just that one this previous one was just a shot uh a cut from that part here and they have more of course if you want to go through okay great uh so we have went now we we went through the hazard uh, we went through the number one uh, where we were talking uh, uh, about the checklist and then we went to the hazard surveys where we were talking about the dough index. And then we went to the HAZOP study. And this is the, uh, we just finished the HAZOP study. And the last thing we have in this chapter is the safety review, safety reviews. 
And safety review is just bringing people, group of people, and they talk together, and they, of course, they have experienced people. The review team, uh, what do they do? They identify what are the hazards, and then they try to eliminate those hazards through the looking at the design procedures. And the review involves, involves, involves or includes finding the initiating event. So why, why does this hazard go out uh, uh, released to, and harming people? What is initiating it? What is going wrong? And what is upsetting our process? And then of course the team comes up with the recommendations which are the actions. And, and this could be equipment or actions in control or procedures. And, and then the focus should be on developing high quality review, okay? That prevents, they want to prevent injuries, they want to prevent damages and so on. So this is like a safety review. And this is a checklist of some uh, uh, informal, and because sometimes you have it formal or informal, sometimes informal is good because it's less pressure and you talk very freely between people rather than making it formal. And, and here where you can see that the, the design features to prevent accidents and they, they sit together, they identify the materials they have. Well, uh, what are the materials that are flammable in our system? These are the materials. Uh, so we need, we need this information, the auto ignition temperature, the lower flammable limit, the upper flammable limit, and the flash point of all flammable materials, okay? And, and so on. Uh, explosivity, toxicity, corrosivity, and equipment so they they get all this information imagine they have all this information about the equipment procedures the materials the startups the shutdowns the cleaning process they have all that information so it's like a checklist for them so that they are ready to 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 work on it now just just to get an idea about about the safety review uh, let's look and uh, have a look on the uh, example one three so this is example 11.3 where we can see the example consider the laboratory reactor system. So this is a laboratory reactor system shown in 11.9. This system is designed to react false gene with any line to produce ISO, cyanide, and HCl. These, these, these components, they are very dangerous by the way. Uh, the reaction is shown in the figure, the ISO, cyanide, is used for the production of foams and plastics. Okay, so this is what we have. We have aniline with false gene producing isocyanate. And, and that's the reactor that we have here. What do we have? We have just pumping in the reactant, which is false gene. And, and of course, it, it, it reacts with aniline. And, and, and after, you, you will have, of course, your isocyanate. Uh, and what do we have? We have a condenser where we want to collect things. And, and of course the scrubber, uh, because you're going to have a lot of uh, emissions and you should be careful of those emissions as, as well, especially if you have uh, uh, the hydrochloride and you have also chlorine could be part when this separates due to high temperature. Okay, and, and there is some information about that false gene is colorless, it has a boiling point, a very low boiling point if you can see here. The threshold limit value for false genes 0.1 ppm, so we should consider that no one is going to be exposed to that and how long he can be exposed to it. Aniline is also uh, dangerous and it has a 2 ppm, so on. So what is the safety review was completed? The safety review was completed by two individuals, the final process design, you see only two people, huh? So they sat together, the final process is shown in 11.11, the changes and addition to the process are as follows. So they decided to change something in the process. Vacuum is added to reduce boiling temperature. So they want to add vacuum. So that's number one. Uh, and, they, and why do they want to do this? So they just make sure that they keep everything as liquid. The relief system is added uh, an outlet to a scrubber. So they are adding uh, a relief system to the scrubber. And the reason that they are adding to the uh, scrubber uh, to prevent any hazards resulting from a plugged fritted glass bubbler, okay? Uh, wow, we could have also, uh, uh, it's, it's all because of the gas bubbler and, and then the gas plugged, uh, we could have a problem there. Flow indicator provides visual indication of flow. That means something you can see how the flows is flowing. Bubblers are used instead of uh, 
scrubbers, ammonium hydroxide bubble is more effective for absorbing phosgene, trap catches liquid phosgene, and so on. So what, 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 what the thing that they came up with, of course, this is very uh, specific and detailed and it needs a lot of expertise about even the components and, and the details of this process. So these two, they have a very uh, thorough understanding and experience of this plant and, and that was their informal safety review where they sat with each other and they recommended the following one, two, three. The uh, phosgene indicator and having a checklist and putting an update sketch for this process and, and so on you can see that. Of course you can have a formal view where you have everything, all the information about everything. The summary, the reaction, the engineering data, the materials, the equipment, the procedures. And, and you can have everything so that you can go to the next step and, and, and do your uh, safety uh, procedure there or the safety review. Okay, uh, this is another system of 11.4. Again, uh, some kind of a system here, uh, you, you can go through this, but there's, there's something added here where you need to add relief valves and some grounding because of static charges. And, and this is some kind of a shape where they decided to do this uh, and, 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 and uh, they had added, added a lot of stuff just and that was like a formal safety where they had all the information about everything within the, this plant. And, and just to say something here that sometimes it's, it's better to discuss and sit together rather than having a hazard study and a survey because people when they sit together it becomes a lot of qualitative ideas that, that are coming out of that discussion of, between experienced people and, and, and the hazard study could not do or give you an indication about what is the solution in that sense rather than people discussing with each other. And by the way, both methods are good because one is quantitative, telling you how severe it is, and another which is qualitative where they come up with solutions, okay? Great, so that was, that was it for this part. And what else do we have? The final part is the other methods. There are many other methods like what if analysis, human error analysis, failure mode uh, effect analysis, uh, there are many many and and just to mention one of them I, so I just went and find out uh, one of them here which is the what if analysis it's an unstructured analysis and using a questions like what if or rather than how so it's not how did the problem happen no it's, it's like someone who's searching for what searching for problems okay so searching for problems so so he goes and say, what if the pressure goes up? Okay, and you're telling him it will never go up. Okay, what if it goes up? What if the pump, uh, the, the pump is pumping more uh, reactants inside? What if the cooling stops and the heat is just developing within the reactor and we are having more gases? What if the level controller is not working well and the level went up and the gases are just squeezed and posing more pressure. What if, what if, what if, okay? So this is like an unstructured way and saying what if, okay? So an annoying person who's always saying what if, if this happens, okay? Listing all the problems and of course then suggesting methods to overcome which are called mitigation methods. And, and for example, and so giving an example here, what if the water flow stopped? What if then let, let uh, the liquefied natural gas, which is very cold, is stopped? What if the natural gas temperature is too low? What if the water is too low? What if the water pressure is too high? And then you come up with all of your questions of what if, what is the consequence? So if here is fine if it is no consequence. But there's a consequence here where the water could freeze and that could, could cause a rupture to your shell and your heat exchanger with hundreds of thousands, you just throw it away. I mean, and, that, and that, that is another that you're going to lose product and so on. And what is the recommendation? Is to put an interlock to stop any uh, liquefied natural gas flow if water flow is stopped, okay? And what if this, let's see what is the hazard here. Is there a hazard? Uh, sometimes there's hazard, sometimes there's no hazard, like no hazard, hazardness, 
you don't need to take any action but if there's something like downstream piping may become imbrittled so you need to monitor the gas low temperature or for example if the water flows too low the natural gas temperature may be too low as well water may freeze inside tubes so you need an alarm for the flow to monitor flow rate and maybe you add a controller system also for the flow so this is the what if analysis begin with the drawings you put a what if and then you put all the consequences and you recommend the actions you recommend the actions and of course you record all the information that you need this is like a real one that you, you, you can see of a what if analysis sheet rather than an example where it says in the reactor if you have toxic releases like what if the phosphoric acid concentration is too low and we have already taken an example but now this is in the sense of what if uh, so what happens if it's too low? We said if you have less phosphoric acid, you have more ammonia, unreacted ammonia going to the storage tank and goes to release. You have a safeguard detector and alarm, a detector for ammonia, of course, if there is a release. And the recommendation is to verify phosphoric concentration before filling, filling the storage tank. Okay, We make sure that we have phosphoric uh, concentration. We don't discover that this concentration was too low, so it's not reacting with ammonia and so on. So that was the part of what if analysis. We, we have covered the checklist, we have covered the hazard surveys, we have covered the ha hazard studies and the safety reviews and the what if, if analysis in this video. I hope that you have gained a lot from chapter number 11 and our next chapter that we are going to cover uh, and our next video will be chapter number 12 about risk assessment till then thank you very much I, I, I thank you very much for putting an effort to learn because learning is the best thing in this life and and remember that a part of learning and a part of saying that if, if you really learned is to give and because if you give of what you have learned that means you have learned correctly thank you very much Masala.